I'm sitting on the edge of the stage. As I sit there, two boys come up, grab my legs, and pull me off the stage. I land on my back, and the wind is knocked out of me. That hurt, physically and emotionally. It was many years before I saw these boys again. The mother of one of these boys passed away, and I decided to attend the funeral. I'm standing in line, waiting to express condolences to the family. I'm becoming more and more anxious. <clears throat> I begin to realize I have not fully forgiven either boy. And suddenly, I don't want to be there. And I don't want to see either boy. I think about turning around and leaving. To be respectful of the family, I stay. And then I see him. Little Russ, I just can't call you doctor. My first thought, here we go again. And I begin to build a wall. Before the wall gets too tall, I take a step back, look at him, say, why not? To which he responds, because I've always known you as little Russ. My wall begins to crumble as I begin to forgive. His sister walks up, says hello to me, and this young man that I'm talking to turns to her and says, we weren't very nice to him growing up. She responds, you weren't very nice to anyone growing up. When I hear this, I know that I'm not alone. She walks off, he turns to me and says, I wish things would have been different. I put my arm around him and say, it's not what we've done, but where we're going. When I saw the young men at the funeral, I realized how that lack of forgiveness was hurting me more than anyone else. And it was liberating to know that I had the choice. I had the choice to forgive or not. It was liberating to know that the choice was mine. And really, the choice is each of ours, especially in the world today. There's a greater divide in the world than ever before, it seems like. We get into the mindset that if you do not agree with me, you're against me. And that polarization has affected each of us to some degree or another. Affected individuals to large companies. And with this polarization, we get into a lot of conflict with each other. Choosing to forgive is a powerful, powerful choice that we each have. With individuals to large companies, they kind of overlap with each other. But choosing to forgive affects all aspects of your life. I was transferred to a new department at work, and I didn't have a good relationship with my new supervisor, which resulted in a lot of conflict. I would go home after work frustrated with my supervisor. I'd wake up in the morning not feeling well, I had headaches several days. I just wanted to take a sick day because I didn't want to deal with her. After many attempts to work it out, I thought, I've studied forgiveness. I researched forgiveness. I write about forgiveness. And maybe I should listen to my own words and put forgiveness into action. After a while, I started defending her when my coworkers would complain about her. My goal was to not only change my perspective, but to really help others see a new perspective. And sometimes that wasn't easy, but I had to do that for myself, even if she did not change. Forgiveness being a choice is something to really remember, that it's our choice. Statistics show that the average US worker spends 2.8 hours a week dealing with unnecessary conflict. That is 
18 days or almost one work month a year dealing with unnecessary conflict. And with this, employees saw conflict turn into personal attacks. Conflict led to bullying in the workplace. Avoidance of conflict had people stay home from work because they didn't want to deal with it. With large corporations, the loss is also great. Loss of customers, loss of new ideas, less stimulating thought. Many times when we are in conflict, specifically with another person, the big problem is we don't see their reality. We don't take the time to listen and understand or to be understanding. Because we don't always have to understand, but we do need to be understanding. Philosopher Paul Watzlewick said, the thought that your own reality is the only reality is the biggest of all delusions. We all have our reality and know they're never going to be the same as somebody else's. Being able to be understanding of that fact that we can coexist without agreeing is powerful. Human rights activist, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, said, to forgive is not just to be altruistic. It is the best form of self-interest. You should never hate yourself for being angry, but when I speak of forgiveness, I mean the belief that you can come out the other side a better person. And that is the goal, to become a better person. I define forgiveness as giving up hope for a changed past. So often we have the, I wish you would have, or I wish you wouldn't have. And when we're not forgiving, that's what we focus on. What we need to do is focus forward and realize the past is never going to change. It's already happened. And when we do that, as the Mayo Clinic says, we are happier, healthier, and less anxious. All from forgiveness. Forgiveness is powerful. And we each can learn to forgive. What do you think the cost of forgiveness is in your life? What do you see that as? Is it a loss of a friendship? Is it anger and frustration? When we think about forgiveness, think about why we have a hard time or what we need to forgive. Maybe it's our spouse for saying something. Maybe it's our bosses for embarrassing you in front of peers. Maybe it's a client because they didn't buy your product. And sometimes it's unable to forgive yourself. Who in your life do you need to forgive to move forward and be more successful? Think of the person that you avoid. Or when you see them, you cringe and think, oh, here we go again. Sit with that feeling for a moment and realize that feeling and those thoughts are only holding you back from being successful. Use forgiveness to resolve conflict and you will be happier, healthier, and more successful. Thank you.